Hello, so welcome to uh, Bucket's Monthly Book Club, where we talk to one of our brilliant authors at HarperCollins about their legacy title. Um, I'm Charlotte Brabin, and I'm lucky enough to be working in the editorial team at Harper Fiction, and even luckier to be working with the brilliant Lucy Foley, one of our amazing authors. Um, and we're here today to talk about The Hunting Party, and um, that's our kind of spotlight title for today. But Lucy is also the author of uh, three historical novels, and you've been with us from the beginning haven't you Lucy yes. since the the very beginning of your with your debut and um, so Lucy's also the author of the book of lost and found uh, the invitation and last letter to Istanbul so do check those out if you haven't already read um, and she's also the author of the guest list which is another amazing contemporary murder mystery thriller um, which was her second thriller after the hunting party um, so Lucy, thank you so much for, for coming and for talking to us. Um, and I just wondered to kick off, do you want to, I know it's kind of casting our minds back a little bit now, because mm. I think The Hunting Party was published in 2019. Um, but just to start, it was obviously a bit of a twist in the tail because you'd publish your historicals and that was kind of the path that you'd started out on in publishing. Mm. And then what sparked the idea for the, that kind of turn in the road and that change with The Hunting Party? So it's funny thinking back, I don't think there was ever a real conscious de decision, you know, I'm going to switch genres, this is what I'm going to do. It was more um, having a think about kind of trying out this other genre. Um, and I've always tried as a writer to write the book that I would want to read, um, or as a former fiction editor that I would want to kind of end up on my desk. And I've been thinking for a long time, I'd really like to read a modern day, 21st century take on the kind of classic golden age murder mystery. And that's really what I set out to do with The Hunting Party. And I was going to say, it does feel a little bit like the, the kind of murder mystery genre is quite, it's quite evergreen almost. Mm. And I think that in no small part played by The Hunting Party when that came out and just the incredible reactions to that and the success. What do you think it is about that murder mystery kind of genre? And I know you're a big fan of, you know, Agatha Christie and all the golden age crime. What do you think it is about that specific genre, I guess, that really appeals to people? Well, I think what really appeals to me when I'm reading um, a, a murder mystery is the sort of puzzle format. You know, you kind of, you know that there's a sort of contract between the author and the reader at the beginning. Um, they're sort of laying down the gauntlet. You know that there are going to be kind of clues that are dropped in for you along the way, that if you spot them, you have a chance of solving the mystery, um, but that hopefully you're going to be surprised at the end and, and wish you'd kind of spotted them all. Um, and I think there's something immensely satisfying about um, kind of that 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 reveal scene um everyone getting their just desserts things being sort of wrapped up with a bit of a bow for you at the end but i also think um you know it's a sort of time a timeless formula or structure if you like but at the same time you can kind of play with current social issues um you know i wanted very much to look at a kind of modern um formulation of the sort of upstairs downstairs dynamic um, and i've done that across all three murder mm. mysteries for me, and I think for a lot of readers, they did really respond to the incredible setting of the book. Just for anyone who hasn't read The Hunting Party yet, which you, you should, it's so brilliant. Um, so it's a Scottish Highland set murder mystery. And just to give a little bit of background or kind of blurb on the book, it's a group of old friends. Is it five or six friends, potentially? I, can't quite I think it's actually now. eight. Oh, is it's it eight? eight? That many? Yes, yeah. I started with a smaller group, though, and grew oh, than that was. But it's five point of view characters, so... So it's a group of old friends and they're Oxford alumni as well. And they basically head up to this remote part of the Scottish Highlands to ring in the new year. Mm -hmm. And they're staying in this remote hunting lodge, this brilliant, it's kind of like a glass structure, isn't it? I think in the, in the wild climbs. Yeah. And at the beginning of the book, we know that there is a body. We know that there's this broken body in the snow. So it's essentially who's the body, who done it. Um, and the really brilliant thing is that the closed room element really comes into its own in that this big blizzard sets in as well. So no one can get in, no one can get out, not even the killer. So that's the, mm -hmm. the kind of brilliant um, pitch of the amazing concept of the book. Um, and how do you feel about the setting, Lucy? Was that something, did you kind of start with setting? Was that the spark for the book or was it more the character set that came first? Well, I think the setting did come first with this book because um, I had this idea that I would love to have a go at this sort of murder mystery, um, but I didn't have 
the spark that would bring it to life. And it was actually then traveling up um, to this very remote spot in the Scottish Highlands, um, getting the instructions for the place we were gonna stay in. Um, and they said, in the event of very heavy snowfall, you may find that you're not able to leave. Um, and that just gave me goosebumps. You know, I think that was the moment I thought, this is the perfect premise for that kind of closed circle murder mystery I've been wanting to write. And so um, really from, from then onwards, the hunting party idea was kind of born. Um, and over the next few days, really, I've never kind of plotted out a book so quickly. Um, I sort of walked around in the snow because the snow was kind of beginning to fall, um, walked around this beautiful remote estate, kind of planning out where this would happen, where that would happen, where it sounds really evil, but where the body would be found. Um, and, and so that came first, but then the characters came kind of very quickly immediately after that. Um, I'd also been thinking, and this sounds slightly evil now, but um, I'd been thinking, this would also be a great place to get a group of old friends uh, for New Year's Eve. Um, I promise my friends are much more likely than the characters <laughs> in the book and not nearly as entitled. But, um, but so the, the two ideas sort of converged um, in, in, in a sort of fun way. And that brings me actually to my next question, which is it's what you say about the characters and they obviously do all have their flaws. Mm. Um, and I guess what's really interesting, I mean, they're all very complex and layered characters, but I love how you also play with those kind of classic murder mystery tropes and mm. that we have the golden couple, the kind of popular party girl with Miranda, we have the banker, we have the quiet one with Katie. There's all these different characters playing their roles, but probably fair to say that they're not necessarily a super likeable bunch or they've all got their, you know, <laughs> slightly darker sides. Um, so do you think for a kind of classic murder mystery setup, do you think they all inevitably had to be a little bit bad and suspicious in their own way for it to for it to work. Oh yes, absolutely. I think everyone has to have, you know, their own kind of dark secrets that they're concealing and their own potential motives. You know, you want the reader to be uh, sort of analysing all of them and, and kind of analysing those interactions between all of the characters as well. And I sort of purposefully um, kept the identity even of the victim a secret to, until towards the end of the book because I really wanted the reader to be looking at all of those interactions between all of the characters, not just between them and one particular character, um, because I thought that would be fun. Um, but I love writing kind of messy, complex, dark characters. I think readers enjoy reading about them. I certainly do myself. But I think we all have secrets. We all kind of, you know, don't um, act in the best possible ways sometimes. Um, but we all have our sort of ways of explaining our actions. And, and in a way, that's what I want to kind of do with those characters and those first person point of view na uh, narrations. Um, I want them to be kind of almost confessional. You know, they're mm. telling you why they feel the way they do, why they're acting the way they do. Um, and then we as the reader are kind of left to judge them. Um, but perhaps also, empathise with them a little bit. It's very interesting about that first person perspective because I think it's easy to take for granted with an author you know when you're so into a story and you're so immersed in it you don't necessarily think about oh this is in the first person or this is in the mm. third person or whatever that might might be but I really love the idea of that confessional first person narrative and did you do anything I guess to get into the shoes of the different characters you know did you wear different this is mad any different outfits for the different characters while <laughs> you were writing the them or did you have to slip on a, a disguise or you know to, to get into their shoes I really wish I had I think more of a kind of psychological disguise <laughs> yeah. um, I'm sure there are elements of me in all of them even the really dislikable ones because you obviously are going to do that as an author um, and and you want to be able to empathize with them to an extent so you kind of have to go to that point I think of putting something of yourself in them but um, no I mean I love I love the kind of challenge um, of kind of jumping between these these very different characters jumping between their heads um, it's kind of as a, as a sort of greedy author I like to be able to one day you know, be writing from Miranda's point of view, another mm. day be writing from Katie's, depending on the mood I'm in. Um, so uh, I had a lot of fun with that. And did you always know who the body was? And I guess both ways, did you know who the, the victim was and who the killer was, or did that evolve in the process? I think I knew from the outset who the body was. Um, my 
the killer, I think, came to me about a third of the way into writing, and I was really surprised. And I oh, thought, yeah. if I'm surprised, then hopefully the reader will be too. Yeah. Well, I definitely was. No spoilers, obviously, but it was a big. It felt like a big twist at the end for sure. Great. And then I feel like there was an extra twist, so Good. definitely won't give anything away. Um, and just sticking on characterization, one thing that I personally really loved in in the hunting party specifically was how you crack into the theme of old friends. I think mm. there's something quite niche and really interesting in that because you have this group who have a whole lot of history together they almost have this legacy they met at university but I think at the point of the of the book they're maybe in their is it mid-30s or they're a little mm. bit further on in life and they've been through you know relationships marriages one of them you know is pregnant and mm. all those kind of kind of life milestones so and, you know, as they kind of go on through the book, they realise that actually they don't have that much in common anymore and mm. things have changed. And I think that's just something that resonates so strongly with a lot of people with mm. old friendship groups. So did you think from the beginning there was something quite, you know, magic in that kind of topic? Was it something that evolved through the process of writing? How did you kind of approach that? Great question. Yeah, I mean, it was it was just such fun to sort of explore that dynamic. Um, you know, it was this sort of idea that almost like family members and the way that you sort of regress when you're with your family, you know, mm. perhaps at Christmas time when there's a kind of big gathering. Um, that these these friends all have kind of very set ideas of who each of them is you know they've kind of got their roles that were sort of set in place when they were 18 you know they were basically children so we have as you say the golden you know the golden couple the golden girl miranda in particular um she's a sort of linchpin of this group they mm. all sort of orbit around her katie's the quiet one you know but they've all it's it's sort of more than a decade down the line um, they've all got their own lives they've all completely changed as people since then um, so it's this really uncomfortable experience of being forced back into this box so katie you know is a really successful lawyer she's um, boss to loads of different people in her office mm. she's sort of not the quiet one anymore but as soon as she's back in this group she's sort of forced into this role of the sort of the sidekick um, miranda the golden girl actually uh, things haven't quite worked out as she thought they might since university. So she sort of felt the world owed her everything um, and it hasn't perhaps delivered on that, um, but she's still sort of trying to maintain this facade. Um, so I had a lot of fun, um, fun as a writer, sort of exploring that. And Lucy, I was interested, what, what was the, obviously we knew the response to the, the book was amazing. We knew that from the beginning, even before we published, we saw the the kind of early reviews and that real reader pull, which was really exciting to experience. And then what did you, you know, kind of hear firsthand, you know, from, from readers yourself? Were they latching onto the mystery elements or did they really react strongly to the characters? Was there a particular bit of the book that they, you know, had opinions on? Was there something that surprised you? What did that feel like when it was published? Well, it was wonderful. I think um, depending on the reader, they see different parts of the book seem to speak to them. So some of them said, you know, things like in a really uncomfortable way, this sort of, you know, this kind of old friendship group feels quite familiar, you know, that kind of wanting to ditch old friends, but not being able to and sort of still uncomfortably being a part of that. So a lot of people said that resonated with them, even if, you know, the, the friends in this book aren't exactly like their friends. Um, then other other people, I think, uh, enjoyed the setting and the kind of wilderness. Um, you know, it's a kind of very beautiful setting and in a way I wanted it to be somewhere that you would kind of want to go and stay um, and sort of make the reader feel very uncomfortable in that because it's somewhere you would actively hopefully want to go on holiday and yet very kind of dark things happen there and as soon as these characters are, are cut off, they're cut off by the snow, they don't have any mobile phone coverage, um, you know, it's really a case of sort of nature red in tooth and claw and they realise how isolated they are and they're sort of forced to look too closely at one another and so I think people kind of enjoyed the creepiness of that as well. Yeah definitely and like you say it's I mean the setting as we've talked about is just amazing you can you really feel like you're there you can feel the the cold and the snow and that the thick tension and I know that you have quite a lot of like film inspiration it feels mm. very cinematic and epic the whole storytelling 
Was there any specific films or kind of TV that influenced the book as well as, you know, kind of the Agatha Christie's mm. or, yeah, was, and I know that film is quite a big inspiration for you in general with your writing. Definitely. Um, specific film or TV is a really interesting question because I'm always inspired by um, kind of Hitchcock films in particular, mm. kind of old noir. Um, I'd say perhaps, you know, subconsciously inspirations for this book would have been things like this wonderful Icelandic drama Trapped, um, mm. where all the characters from this small community are kind of cut off by the snow and there's been a murder. Um, it's very different in many ways, it's a sort of police procedural. Um, I was very clear I didn't want to go down that route with this book. I wanted the emphasis to be on the friends and being alone actually, mm. kind of isolated from any authority, any help. Um, but that was a brilliant series and I think just that atmosphere, the kind of snowbound uh, claustrophobia, definitely probably subconsciously fed into the writing of this book. And I was really interested because obviously in the UK, and you've got obviously a lot of UK readers, but you also have readers around the world now as mm. well. You're very well known globally, which is amazing. And the Scottish Highlands has a certain, I think, you know, feel and kind of it resonates mm. really strongly with the British audience. Has there been any reaction or how have you kind of felt with the US, for example, with the US audience? Do they have a specific view on the Scottish Highlands and what that brings to a book? Do they know it as much as a UK audience, do you think? I don't think they know it as well, but I think, I think you know, the Scottish Highlands are kind of universally sort of known yeah. um, and, and lots of people have obviously travelled there. But I suppose for um, American readers, perhaps they sort of, they have their own sort of versions of this kind of wilderness. So perhaps they think of places like the Catskills, you know, or mm. very remote parts of kind of those snowy mountain estates um, that, that might have some sort of parallel with it. So in a way, I suppose there's a sort of universality to, to that setting, um, even though the, the Highlands are kind of unique uniquely beautiful and very much have their own identity. Yeah, that's a great point. People can kind of take what's familiar to them and also enjoy the exotic in, mm. what's, in what's different as well. Um, and just to go back a little bit to kind of writing process, um, we talked a little bit about your previous books, your historicals, um, and then obviously there was a, as I said, a twist in the tale and you came to the hunting party. Was the, um, the writing process really different for a thriller? Did you kind of find that plot led or you know, the characters in all of your books are so strong. Was that still the thing that led? What did you do differently? So I definitely tried to plot um, more carefully because I felt that was really important, you know, to have a kind of roadmap for writing the book because I had a lot of uh, different strands, a lot of different voices. Um, I had uh, multiple timelines, so that was kind of one, one to juggle as well. Um, uh, so I did have this roadmap for the book, but as soon as I started writing, things started changing and the characters started leading the story into kind of interesting new directions. Um, but that's fun. That's kind of all part of the process. Um, and I think that's where sort of some of the magic happens as a writer is when the characters start driving things themselves and demanding more screen time or you realise actually there's a better way of doing things or they wouldn't act in exactly that way. Um, you have to leave room for those moments. And did you, because I think I'd seen some photos of when you'd actually been to the hunting party inspiration scene and you'd actually visited there with your husband, yeah. which is a great story. And did you look back at photos from that time when you were writing? Did you go back and write anything again actually in situ? Or did you, like you say, let your kind of imagination have space to have a bit of artistic license? Well, funny enough, we'd actually been to this spot three times, I think, before I had this idea. We'd never been there when it was snowy before, and I think that was the thing that transformed it for me and made it feel perfect for this setting. Um, but I don't think I actually went back to research it after that, and I think that was because I felt that I knew the area really well, um, and I also wanted to sort of make it my own. Um, mm. So I needed that kind of distance in a way for the sort of artistic license and the fiction to step in. Um, so obviously I researched the area very carefully, but I, at the point of actually starting writing, um, I just let my kind of imagination take over. And I'm, I'm always interested when a, like an author has one book, and especially with this one, which resonated so broadly and you know had amazing success. And then of course, you know, commercial pressures, you've then got to move on to your next book. Um, and obviously we're here to talk about The Hunting Party mainly, but the guest list was also, you know, phenomenally successful. Another brilliant closed room murder mystery, this time set in, um, it was an island just off the coast of Ireland, wasn't it? And did you find that the characters from The Hunting Party kind of followed you as you were starting the draft for the, for the guest list? Could you leave them behind really easily? Or how was it kind of shrugging off that 
first no, thriller I think, experience? I think I found it oddly easy to leave them behind. I felt that their, I, my kind of journey with them was over um, and I was really excited about my new cast of characters. And I think that's the thing, you're always kind of excited about these kind of new sounds really naff but people you're kind of getting to know um, those sort of new voices you've got in your head as a writer um, and that's very much the case with you know even the book I'm writing now which is after the current book The Paris Apartment you know I've kind of I'm learning about these characters that are going to be put in the book I'm kind of unveiling different parts of them. And I know we'll probably have quite a few um, you know aspiring writers or authors people are always really interested in you know, everyone has a different process and mm. it's not a one size fits all, but would you have a kind of top tip for anyone looking to get a pen to paper? Is there anything you'd say to aspiring writers? I think the thing that's worked for me um, with each book is just to try and write the book that I would want to read. You know, I very much came to writing um, as a reader, um, as a professional reader, in fact. Um, and yeah, I always try and write the book that, that, that I would want to find on the shelf that excites me. Um, and I think if the idea excites you, it's likely to excite other people too, and it's likely to kind of attract other readers. Um, so I think that's my kind of best possible tip. Um, but I think my other tip would be, don't afraid to abandon something if it's not working. Um, mm. You know, there are times writing a novel where it feels hard, you know, and there are lots of kind of plot holes and things that you need to untangle and times where you can't quite see, see the way out of something. Um, but I don't think that's the same as this experience where the idea is just not exciting anymore, the spark yeah. has gone. And I've actually abandoned, I think, two books, about 30,000 words in, um, and it was the best decision I ever made. Gosh, I didn't know that. That's so yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. in, time. in the top drawer somewhere <laughs> yeah. for another day. And it, well, it sounds as if, or from what I've heard, The Hunting Party came fairly fully formed. Like you said, it was quite a well, there's no easy book to write, but it was there in your mind and it mm. came fairly quickly. Did you, were there any darlings you had to kill in the process of writing that one? Oh, loads, loads. There always are. I think, uh, in a way, I think of myself as quite a wasteful writer because I think I write a lot and have to get rid of a lot. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of kind of scenes that hit the cutting room floor, even sometimes characters that hit the cutting room floor mm. because they're just not working. Um, but I had this wonderful, uh, wonderful analogy. Um, I think it's, I think it was Maggie O'Farrell that said it, um, great Maggie O'Farrell. And she said that, you know, think of all that extra stuff as like scaffolding that surrounds the sort of internal structure mm. of the final book that it's going to be. You need that stuff to support, you know, this, this beautiful edifice that will that will emerge from the rest of it. So don't think of it as wasted. It needed to be there. I feel like that's very reassuring advice, very Lucy, reassuring. for everyone, yes. anyone who's like, oh my God, where's all this material going to yes. go? Oh. All plays its part. Yeah, definitely. Um, so as we mentioned, so obviously you had The Hunting Party, your first thriller, um, and then The Guest List uh, came out in, gosh, was it 2020? I think it was just pre-lockdown, wasn't it? Ago. Yeah, yeah, ancient which, history. Yeah. Which feels nuts. Um, and just to mention, so next up is The Paris Apartment, out now in hardback, which is really exciting. And it's, it's in a similar vein, isn't it, Lucy? A kind mm. of still a murder mystery thriller, obviously set in Paris. It does feel like there's a slightly different feel to this one. You've kind of pushed it mm. a bit further in that the atmosphere of the city plays such a part. It's not quite as close potentially as the previous books. Just very quickly and just to kind of tease people a little bit, how was the process of that one? Oh, great fun to write. And yes, as you say, I kind of wanted to have my cake and eat it a bit. So I wanted to have this closed circle murder mystery, but I also wanted to have Paris and the city and I wanted to kind of explore the city and the kind of grime beneath the guilt and some of the kind of social tensions, all of that, um, at the same time as having this sort of, I guess, rather gothic setup in this sort of Parisian apartment building. Um, so it was just such fun to write. It was challenging for that, but um, you know, I never kind of want to be sitting still as a writer. You always want to be challenging yourself and doing something new because I think that's what readers will enjoy. You know, to, to read something that feels fresh and different. Oh, well, I as you know, I absolutely loved it, and it feels both exactly what you'd want from a Lucy Foley kind of classic murder mystery, but also really fresh and contemporary. So definitely do check it out. And I think that's that's all from us. And thank you so much for tuning in. And do make sure that you come back for next month's episode. Massive thank you to the amazing Lucy Foley. Thank you for talking to us about your legacy title, The Hunting Party. Um, and do look out for The Paris Apartment, which is out now. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Great questions. <laughs>